Hello and welcome. Today we're going to discuss Milwaukee phasing out this M12 high output lithium ion battery in favour of the brand new tablet cell Forge one. And we're going to discuss what this is going to mean for you, the user. Well, I will be very sad to see this one go because I really love this battery. I really like it. Um, it's a powerhouse of a battery. It's been the go-to battery for years if you wanted long run time and high output for something that's a high power draw tool. It's got a fantastic robust casing inside and out. The, the cells are well protected in there and the outer casing is pretty strong. Also in the engine room as I call it, the cells, there's 15 Samsung 21740T cells in there. And they provided quite a lot of power at the top. But make no mistake, this was not without its flaws. This is not a bulletproof, flawproof battery. Though the case is very, very robust that I mentioned, if you dropped it a few times, you could break this off. These lugs would have been prone to break off. And uh, the lead would have been falling off, which wouldn't have been great. Um, these spot welds over time sometimes could break off causing the battery to malfunction completely and the most common prob probable fault of these over time was the same cells that I've been talking about so fondly there the Samsung 40T's though they are a terrific cell in my book they're not perfect because over time these tended to fall out of balance with each other that means um, for a pack to be balanced the cells have to be all the same voltage and when they charge and discharge some of them can charge up more than others and when the when any of these banks of cells reach 4.12 the charger stops charging them and if these are sitting at 4 that's imbalance that causes about if these are sitting all at 4.12 and that these are sitting about 4 0.02 that would cause about 10% loss in performance but over time charging and discharging some of these banks of cells can fall lower and lose performance within the battery and in the extreme cases make the battery unusable so that's a big big fault unfortunately I don't have a forged battery in the doctor's surgery here to compare but I can use this one to describe what they've done better and what they've improved and what they've what they've changed in the new battery. Um, I um, took some information from a video by a great creator called Tool Scientist. I'm going to try and put a link in the description to that particular video. He's gone in depth and tested everything that he can test within the Forge battery. Um, my budget wasn't straight to a Forge battery but I'll do my best here. So what have Milwaukee done differently in the Forge battery? They've redesigned the casing. They've redesigned the casing to stop these breaking off. They've actually made what I would consider quite robust casing even more robust. They've made that stronger. they made it of harder, more heat resistant plastic. The main change of the Forge battery compared to this old high output one is the cells we um, we hear so much about tabless cells um, these old Samsung ones are not tabless but they're 21700s they're 21700 cylindrical cells the ones we're replaced them with are physically the same size but they are tabless and they're a different brand explain the tabless cells lower the resistance within the pack and this in theory should help with the balancing issue it should help with that they have not upgraded with Samsung they have chosen Ampius JS or sorry JP40S cells to replace these in theory the Ampius shouldn't be a bad cell it's not a Samsung it will be cheaper so we'll have to decide Time will tell if uh, Milwaukee have made a crafty decision to save money 
and got good performance out of a cheaper sale or that decision cost the consumer money. Time will tell. Next improvement that Milwaukee have made is in the casing and where it, uh, the spacing between the uh, between the cells. They've managed to gain a wee bit more space between the cells and make a gap. There's not really a gap there for air to get in. But the redesign has made more room for airflow between the cells. And th what this does is reduces heat and it will help the performance of the cells when they're under pressure. It will also stop them from overheating when they're charging or discharging in any way. It can only be a good thing. Milwaukee have also replaced these spot welds with something called laser welds. And if I was to get a screwdriver under that there, I could pop that off reasonably easy. And over time, especially these top ones, these let go. These let go over time. But with laser welds, they'll stay on. They will stay on until the metal actually rots. There's no way that the spot weld's going to rust or the laser weld's going to rust and come off the same way a spot weld can or spot weld can vibrate off like it does in the top sometimes. Them using laser welds in the new forge is a massive step forward in my book. It's, it's huge. It's bad for guys like me when I pull the cells out and makes life a lot more difficult because you just will not get that piece of metal off that off that cell if it's laser welded. But you will quite easily if it's spot welded. I know it's bad news for me, but as a repairman, as a de facto battery doctor of the internet, however, if they're that much better, I might not have to repair them as much. Milwaukee have moved the thermistor. That's the heat detection that shuts down the battery in case of an overload. Um, they've moved it from near the middle to closer to the edge, which seems like a, an unusual move, but will not mark them down for it. It's fair to say on the face of it, this, this old classic has been replaced by something, although more expensive, on the face of it, seems to be an improvement in every way. They've spent a lot of time, research, development money, redesigning this battery into what is the modern forge. Before you get your wallet out and start running to the, run to the tool shop in search of some 12 ampere forge batteries there's a couple of sort of red flags with the new model and credit to tool scientist again and my canadian battery sensei who doesn't create content for flagging these up and bringing these to my attention first of all the brand new forge has a balancing chip on the board tool scientist has pointed this out and not only has he pointed it out He's tested it and concluded that it's not connected. It's not actually balancing the cells within the pack. He did a quite extensive test over days, charging, recharging. Uh, it's not balancing the cells, which is more than disappointing. They could have had a battery. It was potentially the best battery ever made. Um, definitely the most reliable. The other one is, and it's not in the battery, it's actually in the new charger. Milwaukee have come up with a new ultra fast supercharger for these forged batteries. Now this thing is very, very useful to someone who's working very hard with their tools. And, you know, they're just, there's some guys <coughs> that need batteries charged quickly and they need to keep the thing moving. These guys that are making loads of money doing what they do and they're good at what they do and I appreciate that that has a real benefit to some people but for the ordinary sort of user even the semi-professional the supercharger could be a bad thing it is however well documented that fast charging is bad for lithium ion long term it will wear out the cells faster that is a fact of life 
I know the forged battery has got better cooling within the cells and it, it undoubtedly will help. It will help. And I would say also the tablet cells will make charging. There's less resistance so there will be less heat. That's a fact of life. So after all that, what is my verdict? Well, Milwaukee definitely put in the work when they redesigned this. They definitely made the casing stronger. They made the structural weld st better. Just a, a full better build quality. They may have cheaped out in the sales time will tell. They dropped the ball by not connecting the balancing chip. And time will tell on the supercharger as well to see if the new forge can stand up to it. I know these older gears definitely would be affected by it. In the meantime, I'm going to keep trying to fix these and keep as many of these out of landfall as possible. And anything that comes into the surgery hopefully will leave with a new clean bill of health. So if you liked that video, please drop a wee like and drop a wee comment, see what you think. I would like to hear your opinion. If you used the forge yourself or thinking of changing to the forge now and changing buying in the whole range, let me know what you think. And don't miss out on Tool Scientist video because that really without that video this video wouldn't be possible it's done a lot of good hard work that i didn't have to so i appreciate him for that and i'm going to link his video in the comment section and in the description